How about a big round of applause for Gabriel? Thank you. Huh. So I'm 17 and I'm off to college without knowing what I'm doing, but my parents would rather I go to college than drift around rudderless and lost because they're directed people and I'm not. I am the kind of girl who when they say go to college, I go. I'm the kind of girl who jumps and leaps without looking or thinking first. At college, Everyone is more directed than me. Even my roommate has already declared her biology major. At my first dorm party during my first week, kids walk up to me and keep telling me what they're majoring in. I can only shrug. The only thing I know for sure is the next morning at 9 a.m. I have to take a subject A exam to get out of a basic writing composition class. I'm good in English and I'll have no problem passing, but I'm pissed off because who wants to get up after their first dorm party and take a test? So when the boy beckons me across the dance floor and asks, do you want to get high? I say, sure, why not? <laughs> after all, he's the first person who hasn't asked me what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> so I walk with him and his friend across the dance floor out the courtyard and to their car to smoke a joint. They get in the front seat, I hop in the back. As soon as they shut, I shut the door, they turn on the ignition and press the automatic locks down. I say, hey. <laughs> they say, we're just going down the hill to smoke this. I say, what about here? But we're already driving off and I'm already locked in the car. I say, please take me back, it's already dark outside. <laughs> And they say, shut up. So I think, oh my god. And that's when I figure out that they're not students, that they don't come from my campus. And I remember that I had heard that last year, a girl had been abducted and raped and killed from Santa Cruz. So now they're driving me down the mountain. They do, in fact, turn around and hand me a joint. The guy says, smoke this. I'm really scared and confused, but I take a hit. We're on the mountain road, twisting up the coast highway. The only thing I can see are trees and bits and pieces of the road that are momentarily caught in the high beams of the car. Eventually, they pull off onto the ocean side of the road and tell me to get out. Far below, I can hear the waves crashing into shore. From out of the trunk, they take a blanket, a six pack, and two rifles. I've never seen a rifle except on TV. So I say, what's that for? And they don't tell me. Instead, they point with the rifles at a path leading over the cliff. And so I walk, sandwiched between them, down the mountain. It's very dark. I fall a few times. And each time they wait, one in front of me, one behind me, until I stand back up again. But they never help me. We get down to the sand and buy a big big um, boulder, they put the blanket, and one of them waits with a rifle while the other one gathers driftwood. Then they light a fire and sit down in their haunches and drink their beer. Finally, one of the boys says, you know we can kill you out here and no one would know. He's right, I think. Even though I'm stoned, I can figure that much out, and in the firelight, I can see his rifle. Far down at the other end of the beach, I think I see another fire, but I know it's too far for me to run. I'm totally lost. I have no idea where I am. And I realized the last thing my parents will know was that I disappeared somewhere on the coast of Northern California. So I say, you're right. And the boys just look at each other as if weighing their next move. Suddenly, from out of the clouds, the moon appears. It's a great, big, full moon, and it shines right down where we're sitting in the sand. I stand up. I have no idea what possessed me, because I'm clumsy and awkward. But on that beach, in that moment, I began to dance. I lifted my arms, I swayed, I undulated, and I leapt. It was pagan and intense, 
And those boys just sat there and stared. Then one of them got up and began to dance with me. And then both of them got up, and we were all running in and out of the shore, leaping in the sand. Finally, exhausted, we fell down on the blanket and went to sleep. In the morning, when it was light, we climbed back up the path. They drove me back to college. It was 9 a.m. when I got out of the car, and the last thing one of those boys said was, this was only a test because we liked you. The next time, it will be for real. I walked away from them and right into my subject A exam. I sat down and I opened my blue book. I wrote my name at the top, but I couldn't go on because I was going to scream or throw up. So I went and handed in my empty blue book. Then I went to my dorm room and stood under the shower and cried because that was the moment that I realized how lucky I'd been. For the next four years, I drove up and down the coast trying to find that beach and the spot where they took me, but I could never find it again. And everybody I asked said they'd never heard of it. I flunked subject A and had to take basic writing composition, which meant that all term, I wrote personal essays and stories. I found my major. Mm -hmm.